Imagine being able to whisk your way above traffic in your own little high-tech urban gondola. This is a concept that one innovative company is trying to bring to reality. But unfortunately, Adam Something here has to come along and rain on the parade. Let's see what he has to say. The Swift City's gondola system and why it's incredibly stupid. Are stupid. Swift Cities is here to revolutionize transportation and real estate. An innovative gondola system combines autonomous pods with lightweight fixed cable infrastructure to move passengers efficiently with significantly lower cost per mile and less emissions than traditional options. As a rule of thumb, a tech company using phrases like revolutionize transportation or autonomous pods should set off all sorts of alarm bells inside your head. Yeah, because we all know that anything that tries to innovate or do something different is always a very scary thing that should be avoided. Ooh, spooky, scary innovation sends shivers down your spine. But let's not jump the gun. Let's see what they came up with. Okay, so it's an urban gondola system, and the whole idea seems to be that it'll whisk passengers above streets, avoiding congestion. The pods would also be fully individualized. I know this because I asked. Yes, it would be fully individualized service. The stations would be on sidings off the main line. It is hard to see in the graphics we have right now, but as a pod stops, it basically pulls over off the main line. This allows any pod behind it to continue along unencumbered. So I will briefly offer for a criticism against the company. If this is something that's going to be a feature of your ride system, as a matter of fact, if you intend on it being a selling point, then maybe it would have been good to include an example of that functionality in their presentation, just uh, throwing that out there. Right, so what we're looking at here is an Uber on wires. I like how this comparison with Uber is supposed to be derogatory somehow, like being compared to one of the single most profitable tech innovations of our generation is somehow supposed to be a bad thing. Basically. Now, what is wrong with this idea? If you look at the animation, these things go rather slow, maybe 20 kilometers per hour. For those of you watching this video here in the States, that translates to roughly 12 miles per hour, which is roughly the same speed as a power scooter. So you're not exactly hauling ass, but for the sake of commuting around town, that's actually not a bad speed. Especially when you consider that this system enables faster travel times by bypassing traffic and other obstacles on the ground level. Meaning they are only suitable for short distance and the lower end of middle distance. One thing you have to keep in mind is that this is just a proof of concept animation. It's basically there to depict what the artists and engineers envision the system looking like once it's completed. It's not meant to be some kind of perfectly 100% accurate clairvoyant look at how the system actually functions. The final system might end up going faster than what's depicted in the animation. We don't know. Can we think of a mode of individualized urban transportation per perfect for short and middle distances. Yeah, it's called a bicycle. Case in point, in their promo video, they show a dramatic reenactment of a person using Swift through an app. I've nailed down the approximate locations, punched them into Google Maps, and would you look at it, it's an 8 minute bike. Hey Adam, do you really think that these are intended to fill the exact same market need that bikes do? Even if we take for granted that the travel times are similar with bikes, which I doubt because this thing can bypass traffic, bikes can't, but let's assume it, bikes still have a lot of limitations. Bikes require physical effort on behalf of the rider, which means they might not be an option for people who are disabled or have difficulty exerting physical effort for long periods of time. And just as I mentioned a moment ago, bikes can't travel over traffic or weave in between buildings and other infrastructure the way this machine can. Bike use is also heavily limited by weather conditions. They don't have any air conditioning. I don't think you're going to want to ride your bike in the heat and get all sweaty on your way to a wedding or an important meeting. Bikes are more difficult to ride at night. They're more easily stolen. They're more dangerous in automotive collisions. There are just tons of niches that bike can't fill, but this device can. Cried. So instead of building towers, wire tracks, stations, and pods, and also maintaining them, you can just paint a bike lane. Transportation revolutionized. Okay, but let's say that your neighborhood doesn't have room for a bike lane, or that the terrain doesn't allow for it. Again, this system is intended to fulfill a different niche than bikes do. Now, on their website, they promise things like efficiency. Non-stop rides and flexible routes move passengers in high volumes. This statement is not true, and betrays a phenomenal misunderstanding of transit from Swift. Do you know what other transportation method has big metal boxes offering non-stop rides and flexible routes? cars, and they are the most inefficient, space and energy wasting transportation there is. Individual motorized vehicles are an inherently wasteful way of moving lots of people, and Swift is no exception. I think this reveals a lot of binary thinking on the part of Adam something. He's basically arguing that there's no difference between cars and any sort of individualized transportation system. So any sort of individualized transportation system has to have the same inefficiencies that cars do. First of all, these gondolas appear to be a lot smaller than your average car. Your typical US car has 
have space for anywhere between six to eight people, and these pods appear to be a lot smaller, accommodating somewhere between just eyeballing it two to three people. These pods also don't have a compartment for cargo or an engine, so again, making it a lot smaller than your average car. These also don't have the same infrastructure requirements the cars do. Car infrastructure, such as roads, highways, and parking lots, tends to take up a lot of space within a city, whereas this system only requires a few pools placed on the ground periodically, making them much more land efficient, which of course would free up a lot of space for cities to have things like parks or walking paths or even Adam Something's precious bike paths. And since all these pods would be in their own sort of self-contained system, these pods would likely be able to coordinate with each other more easily, thus avoiding the traffic jams you would get with traditional automobiles. Just like with bikes, I don't think it's an apt comparison. As for the rest of these promises, citation needed. I suppose that is a fair criticism. This company should make available to the public any data they have to support their claims that they make if they want us to get on board with it, but I could see how these claims could possibly hold some water. A system like this could easily be sustainable, as these pods could run on electric motors. You probably wouldn't need that much electricity since these are small lightweight pods. And the electricity could easily come from renewable sources, like you could have wind turbines and solar panels on the support towers for these things, for example. As for cost, this one is a bit more dubious. This system appears to require a lot of cables, and I can see how that cost could add up quickly. However, that might be offset by the relatively low maintenance cost, as this doesn't appear to have that many moving parts. But yeah, it would be helpful to have some type of research data to look at as a reference. But how do you create an efficient system that moves passengers in high volumes? Let's see if some good old common sense will give us a solution. If we look at any congested city, we can quickly identify busy routes along which a lot of people drive and points of interest where a lot of people want to go to. Well, sure, that might be the case for large, heavily congested urban areas, but what about smaller towns or regions where the travel patterns and therefore the need for public transit isn't quite as easily predictable? That's a market where a system like this could very well be advantageous. Now, get this. If you build a transit line along that busy route and transit stops at or near points of interest, a lot of people will take that transit instead of sitting in traffic jams for two hours. Trams, trains, and buses move far more people than Ubers, as it turns out, even if the Uber is suspended in the air. The purpose of Uber isn't to move as many passengers as possible, the way it is with other forms of transit, such as trams and buses. The purpose of Uber is to get specific passengers to the specific destination that they need to get to. I mean, Adam, how do you think people get from the train station or the bus stop to the final destination they're trying to get through? They usually use something like a cab or an Uber. Again, this is intended to fill a different market demand. But we can't have trams trains and buses because that would violate the holy status quo of car dependence. Wait, who said that we can't have trams and trains? I never said that. He's acting as if implementing a new transit system necessarily entails getting rid of all others. Like, we can have trams and trains and the gondola system too, you know that, right? In fact, what if, and hold on to your hats folks, I'm about to blow your mind, what if we could have the gondola system transport people from the train station to the final destination they're trying to get to? I know, we can have both systems working together. I know, mind blown, right? If you look at Swift's renders, their system, whose biggest selling point is freeing up urban space goes above a five-lane road for cars. If we're so concerned about inefficient urban space use, why not take away a lane or two from cars and convert them to bus lanes, dedicated tram lines, or separated bike paths, which would then move far more people? Well, because as I said, that would violate the car-centric status quo. Or it could be because not every town or city has the space for it. Sure, a large urban city with a major highway running through it might have a lane or two to spare for a tram system or a bike path. But let's say that you're living in a historic neighborhood where the streets are really narrow. You might not have room for a traditional ground-based transit system, and a system like this could come in handy. You would think a transportation revolution would entail breaking the status quo and not abiding by it. You know, welcome to the American Revolution, where we recognize King George as our rightful ruler, and our radical goal is to put up a US flag next to the British colonial office if they let us. But this does revolutionize transit. Typically, the decision whether to take public or private transit involves some sort of trade-off. Taking private transit entails trading off efficiency for convenience, and taking public transit entails trading off convenience for efficiency. It seems like the idea behind this system is that you can sort of bridge the gap between the two, where you can have the convenience of private transport, but also the efficiency of public transport. And we periodically see transit ideas like this. The straddling bus was one of them, the sky bus would have been something like that, even the Dyer Inside Channel, a black hole of intelligence and creativity, has come up with multiple projects like Swift, and they're all equally stupid. Okay, at this point you're not even trying to be intellectually honest. At this point you're just lumping together a bunch of different concepts for transportation and
and just blatantly treating them all as if they're the same. As you can see, Swift is suffering from a number of issues, so let's go ahead and fix them. First off, the wires are a terrible idea, especially since the pods would be self-propelled. Usually cable cars are attached to the wire and there is a big engine somewhere that spins a wheel that moves the wire, thus the cabins. If the pods are self-propelled, however, their wheels would wear out the steel wires very quickly, leading to frequent and expensive replacement. So something you should know about Adam something here is that he loves trains. It's one of his favorite things to talk about on his channel. Well, it turns out the railroad industry already came up with a solution for this problem. You see, electric trains have something called a pantograph. That's the part that sticks out on the top of the train and makes contact with the electrical wires. Now, if the pantograph wire was laid out in a straight line, you would get a massive hole worn through the center of the pantograph. So instead, the lines go in kind of a zigzag pattern to make sure that the pantograph gets evenly worn down. This approach, combined with maybe some rubber protective coating, could prevent this from being an issue. So let's have a solid steel rail instead, like on this promotional render of theirs, thereby cutting down on wear. You can also combine it with a power source wire inside the rail, so the pots don't need batteries to run, which they presumably would have otherwise. Now those towers look nice and slick, but they would be too expensive. Not to mention, our system would then be vulnerable to high winds and would need to be shut down during storms and so on. Maintenance would also be difficult, since you would need to show up with a truck hauling a crate and a basket to do any work. Rescue would also be complicated. If a pod breaks down, you would need to call the fire department to evacuate people. So this is something I like to call the Thunderfoot fallacy. The Thunderfoot fallacy is when you automatically assume that an idea is bad just because there's challenges associated with implementing it. And it's kind of a disingenuous straw man because it implies that people who advocate for a certain idea are somehow denying or aren't aware that there are practical challenges with implementing their idea. Are there technical challenges associated with an urban gondola system? Like, yes, of course there are, but they're not insurmountable. Like, yeah, maintenance might be a potential difficulty, but we could overcome this by putting access ladders and access bridges across the system. There could be an onboard fire suppression system as well as some kind of emergency ladder that drops down. The fact that you don't have an imagination as to how these challenges could be overcome doesn't mean it's a bad idea. You're just imposing your lack of creativity onto the rest of us. Therefore, I propose to transfer the system to ground level, eliminating all the aforementioned issues. Now, efficient space use is very important to us. Thankfully, there are five car lanes, two of which we can easily convert to dedicated pod lanes, which will move a lot of people, increasing efficiency. Now we can skip the wires and poles by putting the rail on the ground, and we can immediately have two even for added stability. We can also move the power from inside the rail to above the pods for easier and cheaper maintenance and increased safety. Now the individualized transit idea is cute, as in our pods operating like automatic Ubers, but that's not efficient enough. Let's build our line along a busy corridor with pre-planned intermediate stops so that a lot of people can get on and off wherever they want. For this highly efficient operation, however, the pods are too small. So let's join our pods together into one big, long articulated pod with lots of doors and much higher capacity. Join us at TR4M Systems for this incredible new mode of transit no one has thought of before. I have truly revolutionized transportation. And that just goes to show you that Adam something on a fundamental level just doesn't understand the urban gondola system. It's not a tram, it's not meant to be a tram, it's a completely different system intended to fulfill a completely different niche. Trams are meant to carry large volumes of people all the same direction. These are intended to carry smaller volumes of people to the specific destination that they need to get to. My biggest problem with all of Adam something's transit videos is that they all seem to be based around this idea that Adam something has of what a perfect transit transit system should look like, and anything that deviates from that even remotely is in his mind a bad idea, even if it's something intended to fill a completely different market niche. Anyways, what do you guys think of the urban gondola system? I think it's pretty cool. Let me know in the comments. Until next time, this has been Philosopossum, making stupidity play dead. Everyone take care.